when I sit down, I'm the shorter. Ooh, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Straight Cast Outdoor Cartoon Television. I'm Pat Renwick. Day three, Forest Wood Cup festivities continue here live from the Expo Center. This is Ryan Popcorn Whitaker, and uh, we're pretty stoked right now that we have a couple FLW Tour superstars. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about superstars. that. Superstars. <laughs> Rock stars with us, uh, Scott Canterbury and Matt Airy, right here. Give it up for them. These are the dudes. We're going to talk about some Earl. That's right. Some some Quaker State Earl. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, we're happy we're he- you're here, but we're not happy you're here. Does that make any sense to you? It does. It really does. You know, it's uh, it's good that we're here, but I'm, we're both disappointed. You know, Matt. I know he was around a lot better fish than I was was and he had some bites and uh you know I fish shallow this tournament I missed the whole deal I and uh you couldn't compete up there on the bank like I like doing so we're here on Sunday instead of out there fishing yeah Matt, it, it's a little bittersweet you know we, we love seeing y'all's pretty faces well, thank don't, you. Don't, oh, don't, nice. don't get us wrong thank you. here's my but, good look right there yeah, that's it that's, that's it. your good side <laughs> yeah but, but, yeah, get to come hang out in the Quaker State booth, see all the kids, man. That's what it's all about. And uh, we're having a great time today. Um, hope everybody keeps showing up because it's, uh, it's starting to get crowded in it, here, man. It is. It's, yeah. I mean, it's really picking up. And thank God the air conditioning is – you guys don't know about this. because <laughs> we, 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 yeah, we heard. Yeah, you didn't have air conditioning on the water yesterday. It was but, 90 uh, degrees. Yeah, yesterday. it was just as hot in here yesterday. Yeah. It was like a sauna. And it's not that kind of party, you know what I mean? We didn't, we weren't looking for that here yesterday. <laughs> yeah. <It> was, <laughs> but were you on that shallow deal too, Matt? Is that what you were? No, you know, I, I was running the heron deal. I was you running were? points. I, um, you know, that that deal is very sensitive to timing, and uh, unfortunately, a lot of the guys that I was seeing were the Cobb and the Gagliardis and and some of that crew. So it was a. Uh, um, you know, had some big bites, but those herring fish are real fickle. Um, they're really hard to get to commit to a bait. Um, they're just so educated this time of year, and uh, you just got to keep changing until you, you – but, you know, you, you get – I mean, I saw 20 pounds each day come up on the bait, and all these guys are seeing that, and some of them are capitalizing on that, and some of us weren't. So, um, it, it, unbelievable the weights it's putting out. I would have never guessed in a million years if you told me it might take 60 pounds to win the Forest yeah. Wood Cup in August on Lake Murray. I'd have called you a liar, but – Especially for a three-day tournament. You know, this is the third time I fished the Forest Wood Cup here at Murray, and I think 51 and 53 pounds won in both of those tournaments was a four-day tournament. So the weights these guys are catching this year, it just blows my mind. And, I mean, it's just unbelievable to see what Lake Murray potential is in August. And these guys are really showing you the potential of the lake. They're dialed. Now guys, no, they're that, dialed in for sure. With that with that herring deal, um, is, that, is that strictly you're only catching them if they're on top? If, if they're yeah. busting. Matt, Matt knows a little more about that, but, uh, you know, I'm really good friends with Justin, and he, his fish are not – he's not seeing them school. I watched today, and he's seen some of them school and caught them, but, you know, those fish are suspended up in the top of cane piles, a lot of them, mm-hmm. just, and randomly chase a herring. But he's just pulling up, making four or five casts right over the top of that pile and trying to draw them up. So he's catching a lot of them that he's not seeing, but most of the guys, I know Gagliardi's not catching anything unless he sees them bust. Right. Hydro waves on high. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm telling you that hydro wave has been a big player this week. A lot of people, I get questions all the time, man. Does that thing really work? I'm like, no, nah, man, it don't work. You don't need one. <laughs> but, yeah, that thing's a big player. But like Scott said, those fish, uh, a lot of them are relating to cane and things like that, but you can call those fish up. The thing about it is a lot of people don't realize most of those fish, they might be over 30 or 40 foot of water, but they're only sitting about 10 foot down all the right, time. Right. They're constantly roaming around. If you get a bait over top of their head, they're going to come up on it. You know, right. whether they actually commit to it, it's all about timing. But it is a, uh, you know, they don't necessarily have to be busting for you to be catching them. That's a patient way to have to fish. It is. Absolutely. It is. I mean, uh, we're, uh, I'm a shallow guy like you. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, not shallow thinking or shallow. But, <laughs> the, the, uh, <laughs> but the, the, the fact that, you know, I get very uncomfortable in deep water. I do. I don't know about you, Scott, but I do. I mean, I, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable in deep water. I love fishing ledges now. Uh, but that chasing schooling fish is not my deal for sure. Yeah, it, it's uh, crazy. It, I, heard, <laughs> I heard you say yesterday you caught a fish on a uh, on a, on the Bagley. What was the Bagley you, you were? Checking? It was a new. It was a pro sunny bay. It's just a squ- uh, little square bell crank bay that we've been working on for a while. They came out with a sunny bay a couple of years ago, and the pro model is a little bit bigger version of that. And I mean, I've used it all year. I've caught a lot of fish on it and uh, weighed in one yesterday on it. Thought I had something going. I just had put it on and caught one on it, but it didn't didn't pan out. I only weighed in one on it. So you're like you throw it and you're like 
Yeah, this is the deal. This is the deal. This is the deal. I mean, I, I hadn't thrown it. I hadn't thrown it five minutes and caught one. You know, I thought I had yes. something figured out. <laughs> and that's just a square. About belt? forty-five minutes later, you know, I still hadn't had another bite. Now you're so. kicking out the worst, worst bite. That's the worst yeah, bite. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. That's right. And I tell you what, those herring fish out there, you know, getting one of those to commit is a is a tricky deal. I caught one or two during practice, and I mean. The ones I caught, you'd pull up on a place and make one cast, and I mean, when your bait hit, you might twitch it once, and it's just an explosion. I mean, they crush it. But I mean, if you're like working a bait over it, two or three casts, and they're not, you just can't. They're not going to get it unless they just get it on your first one or two casts. I mean, I think when you bring it over their head, they get it, and that's it. So you, you I mean, you got to, you got to keep running and gunning. Yeah, that's what those guys are doing. I know Cobb. I mean, I've watched him this morning. They said that he made. 16 stops in the first hour. I mean, that's pretty amazing oh to me. God. And then uh, nice. I think an hour and 30 minutes, he was up to 21 stops. I mean, and he's got a, he's still on a, like, limping around and got a half-broke foot, you know. I mean, right. he, it ain't like he's really <laughs> you know, mobile You right know, now. Atkins <laughs> did that to him. We found they that were, out. They were together. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. they were together when it happened. <laughs> we found out. He sabotaged him, but it didn't work too well. <laughs> I don't know. It's working pretty good for, for Atkins today, so we'll see. Hey, we're doing this thing on the, on the Facebook Live right now, and your fans got some questions for you. JP, hi. What's going on? For Matt and Scott. Uh, they want to know which one of you is more disappointed that Beaver is not on next year's schedule. <laughs> oh, wow. That's, that, that's a great question. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd fight Scott any day of the week saying me, but but he'd probably argue the same thing. Yeah. You know, both our uh, first career wins came from that lake, and, and uh, of course, it holds a special place in both our hearts. And Scott, uh, um, well, that, that that's pretty much the lake that built a house for both of us, basically. Yeah. That's, <laughs> we, about, that's we, about the truth. Yep. Yeah, but, uh, but, yeah, we're, uh, I mean, you know, 15, 17 years of going to Beaver Lake, I mean, I'm ready for a change. I mean, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't, and uh, I'm sure Scott feels the same way. We like to see new venues. There's a lot of great lakes in this country, so we've um, got a great schedule for next year, so excited about that. We do have a great schedule. I hope that uh, Cumberland is my new Beaver Lake, I'm hoping. So, nice. you know, I, I, we, I really enjoyed it Creatively this year. Creatively visualize yeah. it, Scott. We, it will that was the first time I've ever seen it, and I really enjoyed it. Fish is <laughs> sort of like Beaver. It, I mean, I think it's a little better than Beaver, really, but uh, I enjoyed it. That's a good lake, so the schedule looks really good for next year. So, are, I mean, be, be honest with us here. Are you, are you kind of kind of glad you get a little a little resting time now i mean it's been a, it's been I, don't, a I don't know about matt but there's not much resting for me we're in the middle of building a house and oh gotcha uh, building a house i still got a southern open and then for team usa bass we're going to south africa and fishing That's against right. 18 other countries so i'm not i don't have much rest matt's probably going to do a lot more bow hunting than i'm going to get to this year so he may not uh, get yeah, to rest either I, i'm gonna be resting a lot 20 <laughs> foot up a tree dude yeah. in south africa come on how crazy is yeah. that gonna be Scott? oh it, i'm looking forward to it it's, it's exciting you know it was an opportunity of a lifetime for me, you know, to get to go do that, and I just couldn't turn it down. Uh, it's really exciting, and I'm looking forward to that opportunity. Do you have to get special shots? Yeah, yeah, you do. I haven't had them yet, so uh, you, you I'm, better I, get them. Yeah, oh, I'm going to for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I need to care, be sure and get all the precautions I can get taken care of for that trip. So, who do you got going there? It's I know it's you. Uh, Watson, Charlie Evans, too. Yeah, Fritz. David Dudley, Fritz, David Dudley, David Fritz, Mark Rose. Scott Martin's our team captain. Fred Rumbanis. I think that's it. Gotcha. Is, Lionel Botha. Is, uh, is, is Mark Rose and James Watson going to get along on this trip, do you think? Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, it, <laughs> I think, I think it, uh, we got the comedian with Watson going with us. So, I mean, yeah, I think everything will be good. We'll all get along. I saw Rose give him a look yesterday. It wasn't too pleasant. Really? Yeah. I didn't know what was up there. <laughs> There's it's no it's tell. Watson. Everybody looks at Watson. That, that that's that's, what, it was, that's yeah. what it is. Okay, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I, figured, in the way I know because Mark's pretty together, dude. I mean, <laughs> but yeah, that was a look. It was like behave yourself, young man. <laughs> kind of look, you know. Yeah, he'll keep him straight. It was the look my dad used to give me when I was doing dumb shit. You know what I mean? That's <laughs> not. That's I'm not kind of, mad. I'm disappointed. <laughs> <That's> yeah. <kind> of, <laughs> so yeah, you got a pretty cool sponsor here. I mean, let's let's get real about this Quaker State, man. That's pretty awesome. It it is awesome. You know, it's a huge company. Been in the industry for a long time, and you know they, in when they got into the fishing world, you know they really helped us out. I mean, I couldn't be out here without them, but they've also helped all the fishermen out. We've gave away so much oil in the past couple of years. It's been unbelievable, and I know Matt's super proud to be a part of the team, and and it's just uh, the great opportunity for all of us. Yeah, it is, absolutely. I mean, Quaker State coming on board was a dream come true, not just for Scott and Jimmy and myself, but 
all the anglers. This sponsor, Quaker State being a sponsor of FLW, has done more for all the anglers sure. on the tour than any sponsor in the history of FLW. Uh, sure. the, the amount of oil, I think it's about $85,000 worth of oil uh, retail wow. that, that we give away to all the anglers on tour. Wow. Um, you know, they run the Pennzoil Marine Pencil, which is also owned by Shell, which is part of the Quaker State uh, Quaker State team, too. Um, Rotella. Guys are, yeah, the Rotella brand. Um, guys are running the Rotella and their diesels, and, and then, of course, the Pennzoil Marine oil is running by most of the, most of the guys in their outboard motors. Yeah. So everybody's covered for the year on oil. Absolutely. Pretty much, yep. pretty much. It, they, they do what they can to help out with everybody. Oh. That's awesome. And, and you touched on it there. I mean, the fact that they're they're helping everybody because let's get real about this man the, the this bass fishing game um it ain't cheap and it ain't easy okay and you guys work your asses off day in and day out everybody thinks it's all glam but oh, but it's yeah. really everybody not everybody thinks it's those feather it, feather pillows and silk sheets every night but it's not that yeah, i mean yeah, we're, you know, we're full time truck drivers and part time fishermen that's, that's <laughs> right it's not a, a bobber and an earthworm and a cold bud light you know in a lawn chair and a lot of people get the wrong impression that's what we do but um you know we uh um I mean, we're making 1,500, 1,800 casts a day. We're putting 70 hours a, a, a week in on the water, things like that. And, and it's it's work. I mean, it is straight-up work. Uh, it's fun work. Don't sure. get me wrong. You're blessed. But it's work, yes. Oh, yeah, for sure. But, but you know, let's say you, you have a not-so-decent derby and you, and, and you make uh, uh, four grand. Okay, right. and people are like, "Wow, they just won four grand." I mean, still four <laughs> grand is a lot of money to a lot of people, but they don't realize that you probably spent nine grand to get, get you know yeah. to, get, to get that. So it's it's a um, it, you know you guys have are been fortunate enough to have have some some tour event wins where, where you can. You can put a little bit of that away. Yeah, and your sponsors, of course. Yeah, sponsors but, are everything. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. It takes that. It, it, it takes that to, to do it. it, it because otherwise, um, you'd have to have an awfully huge bankroll. Oh, yeah. <laughs> said, we, like Matt huge said, is an understatement. <laughs> it takes those sponsors. I mean, everybody that's on Matt's shirt and my shirt, it's all a big team, and we couldn't do it without any of them. So, I mean, if it wasn't for the sponsors, I mean, you couldn't just get out here and make a living – off of your winnings. I mean, there's a few people that can a few years, but you got to have you got to have that help and that support. Your family support back home, also everything. It all works as one big team. Sure, and and that keeps you strong mentally. Oh yeah, because for sure. it's real easy to left hook yourself when you're out there on the road by yourself, maybe doubting some yourself and doubting what these fish are doing, and it, that that support from the family and friends and fans. Oh is yeah, huge. Absolutely huge. It is. Yeah, no no doubt about it. What do you think about the uh, about the fact that, and, and I'm trying to put this gracefully here, that Hunter that Hunter sponsorship Hunter has become not Hunter as readily available because of the spreading Hunter out Hunter of the availability of sponsorships and how and how that affects a professional bass angler. Well, I think you know where you have to really break that down is the credibility that we carry. You know, there's a lot of companies out there that have flooded the industry with what I would call field staff, you sure. know, um, things like that. Pro the, staff. The, uh, I yeah. think uh, guys <laughs> online call them the 30 percenters yeah. or something. 10 percenters. <laughs> the 10 percenters. Yeah. Sorry. 30, they be winning. winning. There, there's, nothing, there's absolutely <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Don't, don't no, get me wrong. No. Um, a lot of guys, you know, but those guys have full-time jobs. You know, this is, this is how we put food on the table for our families. This is how we right. pay our bills. And the credibility and the exposure that we carry, I think, that puts us at a different level as far as our value to a sponsor. And that's, uh, you know, that's that's what they have to see in us. Yeah, that, well said, Matt Airy. <laughs> well, well said. <laughs> now, what what uh, is there anything you guys would have done different um, if you go back? I mean, I know everybody. You go out there and practice, and you feel like you you got it figured out. But uh, if you had it to do over again, is there anything you think you might have missed or? Or anything like that you would do different? Well, me, I definitely, if I had it to do over again, I definitely, I would never even go to the bank. Uh, (laughs) I thought if I, you know, I mean, I had some good bites, some decent bites on the bank. And the the very last day of practice, I went up the river and had, I mean, I pulled up a couple of pretty good fish and saw them on top of, you know, a four-pounder and a three-pounder. And was able to think that if everything went really good, I could catch 14 or 15 pounds, Mm -hmm. which I thought was a really good bag. And it's nothing here this week. I mean, 14 pounds. I mean, don't get me wrong, 14 a day, you'd have have made the top 10 and got some more money. But, uh, you know, you had to be catching 20 pounds a day just about. I mean, it's unbelievable. It really is to see Lake Murray as good as it is 
in a, in August. I mean, this is middle of August, dog toughest do- time of the year to catch them, and these guys are just really showing out. It, yeah. It's because you guys are seriously the best in the world. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. No, I mean, if, I, if, when you get dialed in on something, there's those guys are dialed in on exactly what the bigger fish are wanting and and where those bigger fish are at. I mean, even that midsection of the lake, midsection and up, if you see some schoolers, they're chasing a little bitty heron or a little bitty shad around. Uh-huh. You get further down the lake, and the, the, even the heron are really big. They're a lot bigger bait, and the fish are down there are a lot bigger and healthier fish for sure. I mean, that's what keys it in, right, Matt? I mean, you that's the that's the difference between a professional bass angler and a weekend bass. Yeah, it's those subtle difference. That's right. That goes back to what we were talking about earlier with credibility. I mean, you know, you, these guys have exposed this lake. In August, you won't, I mean, even the locals, you know, 12 pounds was winning the tournaments locally over the last month. And then you're looking at 20 guys the first day that brought in over 12 pounds. You know, I mean, that was <laughs> that's insane to me. And, and like Scott said, um, the the bank bite was actually really good uh, pre-practice. When we John, were down Cox there. John Cox told us. Yeah, well, right. yeah, well, he spilled the beans in. So, <laughs> um, but but we all know that's no secret. Cox doesn't know what more than a foot of water looks yeah. like. So, um, and he kicks our butt day in and day out fishing in that that, that, that shallow right. water. But right. but yeah, the uh, the water fell about 10 inches since pre-practice, and that really had a negative impact on the shallow bite here. Um, the heron, as far as what I did, I, I wouldn't do anything differently. I just, my rotation, my timing, I didn't execute, missed some big opportunities. Um, I know I was on the right deal, uh, just was in the uh, right spots at the wrong time, I guess. The, the amazing thing for me, and, and calling you guys the, the best in the world, I think the reason is, is when you guys do get dialed in, it gets better every day. You know, that, at the that. lower levels, you see guys start to fall off. But you guys, as soon as you're on them, it's, it's better every day. I mean, it's, know, been, it's been a big thing. learning curve. I mean, a learning curve for me when I, when I went professionally is learning how to practice and learning how to get better every day. You know, going to a tournament and catch them really good the first day, but then you're going to catch them better the next and better the next, or at, right. least, or at least stay really consistent. There's a lot throws. of guys that goes out and can catch them one day, mm-hmm. but when you got to catch them three or four days, it's a whole different ball game Especially out there. Especially with, you know, 100-something boats out there. Yeah, yeah. To catch yeah, yeah that's with right. With the yeah. flotilla of the Huns out there. Yeah. But, he, but the deal is, too, that you, you said it there also, um, you, a professional bass angler is able to realize what they did wrong. A lot of us just, you know, like a weekend guy, or uh, we're mm-hmm. like, just hey, didn't get them today. We just think they just weren't biting, you know. <laughs> but they're, but <laughs> they're biting somewhere. They're yeah. all. Well, there. If they don't bite, they're going to starve to death. Somebody yeah, can always right. wreck them. But you but, guys have the ability to realize. Well, and, and that weekend angler, he can be content with that. If if we don't catch him, we don't get paid. So <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that's different. If he goes to his, his job and doesn't do his work, he's not going to get paid either. But, but yeah, I think, you know, versatility is a big deal. But keeping an open mind because conditions change every day. People don't – they change every hour. On Lake Murray, they might change every 15 minutes. Right. You know, uh, the clouds and the wind and the sun, that all has a big impact on the way those herring fish bite and the way they set up. So um, just being able to make those adjustments um, is huge. Yeah. And, and you, you, you got it. It's your living. You said you can't drink Quaker State. Yeah. And that's not safe. <laughs> Jimmy that's does. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> you were talking about the Hydrowave, and actually, what you don't know about the Hydrowave, I was talking to uh, Gene Eisenman, the creator of the Hydrowave, and there's actually a new Jimmy Houston laugh sound option. <laughs> On the hydro wave. I'm going to pass on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause most I get guys to hear are, that. I hear that laugh in my sleep. I might, I might, I might, I might use now. that if I'm getting on a spinnerbait bite one day. There yeah. you go. They, they there like that. Jimmy, well, he, Jimmy <laughs> thinks that it's going to draw the bigger fish. Yeah. The ones he kissed when they were two, he thinks they're going to come back for more sugar. <laughs> well, <laughs> they're if, grown up. If, well, then they're like 93 now, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, man, now, uh, hey, hey, before you guys get Sorry, out of here. Sorry, Jimmy. Well, <laughs> Jimmy <laughs> knows, man. You don't have to apologize to him. I got to see him in five minutes, so I don't want him to be mad at well, me. make sure you ask him. Said Pat wants me to ask you about that uh, Hydrowave Jimmy Houston laugh. Yeah, we'll, we'll do, do that. that. Absolutely. And, and ask him where you cannot get that. <laughs> For sure. Okay. <laughs> which one doesn't have Jimmy Houston? Yeah, which one do I not one. buy? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Guys, before we go, um, say something to your fans and your sponsors out there. Yeah, you know, we couldn't. I appreciate all the sponsors, fans, family, support, everybody. Uh, you know, all our fans, they can follow me at Canterbury Fishing on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, but, uh, you know, really appreciate all the support. The guys here in Columbia have been unbelievable this week. All over South Carolina, I mean, it's just been the great support of the state and the people around here. It's been great, you know, hospitals. So can't say enough about it. You know, it's great to see everybody. I hope everybody comes out and watches the way in today. Got Easton Corbin coming in for a big concert today at 4 o'clock free, so. 
It's going to be good. Awesome. Yeah, for sure. Big shout out to all the fans, uh, family, sponsors. I mean, Quaker State first and foremost. Um, a lot of my top sponsors, Lunker Hunt, Okuma, couldn't do it without those guys. You know, they're uh, they're our backbone, absolutely, in the industry. And, and, and we're both fortunate enough to have a couple good women behind each of us. Uh, Dixie, uh, Scott's wife, and Emily, my wife. Um, very special people in our lives. Like you said, when we have a bad tournament, we're on that 16-hour drive home. And the and, uh, last thing we want to do is talk to an angry wife. But they're, 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 they're there to pick us back up every time we have a bad event. So big shout out to everybody. Thanks a bunch for the support. Looking forward to next year. But right now, I'm going to concentrate on deer season. There you go. And, guys, thank you so much for, it. for coming Appreciate y'all at Strays hey, Fest. Yeah, yeah, man. Thank, yeah, thank you, you, Matt. And, uh, and, and of course, you guys are welcome back on the show any Wednesday night. You know that. Awesome. That's awesome. Love to be we'll, back. We'll have yep. a good time. Hey, uh, keep it locked right here. Straight Cast Outdoor Cartoon Television. Put the power poles down. <laughs> it's a star-studded gala event on day three. You don't want to miss any of this. See you in a little bit.